Welcome. This is a review of the stroke core measures, which will be labeled with the symbol CM, and the best ED and inpatient stroke care, where a bedside stroke checklist will be used. Let's strike stroke right in between the core measures. Together we can do this. If any core stroke measure or step is not done, the best thing to do is to document that in writing, including the rationale for skipping whatever is not done. Yes. Document what is not done. Stroke core measures and key elements of care in the hospital. All patients with stroke should be given VTE prophylaxis. Also, all patients with stroke should be initiated on antiplatelet therapy before the second midnight. For example, if the patient is admitted at 23.59 hours one night, at the tick of the second midnight, that is 24 hours and 1 minutes after admission will be the second midnight. In patients has aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, initiating the modipin therapy, which is used to protect the brain from the ischemia from vasospasm, not to prevent the vasospasm. Patients with stroke will need education about their diagnosis and how to decrease the risk of recurrences. Education should be given verbally, as well as printed, and we need to document that both verbal and printed education were given. Obviously, it's important to begin educating the patient from day one by giving them the stroke booklet early on so they can start studying it and asking questions about how to better take care of themselves. If the patient with a TI is discharged from the emergency room, the stroke education has to be given, verbally and printed, including the booklet and documented. Patients with stroke are assessed for the need for rehabilitation. If, for example, the patient has TIA and the patient is back to baseline with no deficit, then document that the patient is back to baseline and does not need these services. Patients with ischemic stroke are discharged on antithrombotic therapy. Also, if the patient is found to be in atrial fibrillation or flutter, then the patient should be discharged on anticoagulant unless there is a documented contraindication. It is relevant to daily educate patients on their individual, specific risk factors. Stroke patients should be on a statin medication unless there is a documented contraindication. The beneficial effect of the statin goes beyond the lipid effect. These medications have other beneficial effects as in neuroplasticity, brain recovery, improving blood flow properties, and others. In the emergency room, if a patient presents with active stroke or stroke-like symptoms within the first 24 hours, they should be considered for acute thrombolysis. Critical information to help make this decision includes the time when the patient was last known to be in usual state of health, or lackish, when was the patient last known to be at baseline, which is not the same as when the patient was found with the deficit. Also, critical is to calculate the NIH stroke score and find out the level of functioning before the current symptoms, this last one is done by using the modified ranking scale. If the patient is a candidate for IV alteplase, then the indications and contraindications will be reviewed. The goal is to administer IV alteplase in less than 40 minutes from the patient arriving. All patients with an NIH stroke score of 6 or greater, or with any disabling deficit, and arriving within the first 24 hours from Lackish, should be considered for endovascular therapy. These patients may need a CT angiogram and or a CT perfusion. The goal is door to groin of less than 90 minutes. Only patients considered for endovascular therapy should be getting CTA or CTP. If a patient is found to have any intracranial bleed, elevate the head of the bed to 30 degrees, the goal systolic blood pressure is 110 to 160, and if the patient is on anticoagulants, then the effort is to reverse the effects of the anticoagulant. There are order sets available to reverse all the anticoagulants available. All patients with stroke or stroke-like symptoms must be NPO and have the nursing swallowing safety screening. The screening is performed by the non-speech pathologist personnel, while the evaluation is performed by the SLP. The screening and its results must also be documented. If the patient fails the screening, then the SLP must be informed so that they can perform a swallowing safety evaluation. The patient with the stroke or stroke-like symptoms needs an assessment depending on the type of stroke syndrome they have. If the patient has an ischemic stroke, then the NIH stroke score must be performed. If the patient has an intraparenchymal hemorrhage, then the ICH score must be completed. 
If the patient has an aneurysmal SAH, then the Hunt Hess score should be performed. All scores are to be completed and documented within the first six hours. The patient should be emergently evaluated to include all vital signs, reminding that the goal systolic blood pressure for ischemic stroke should be between 120 to 200. According to the guidelines up to 220 would be acceptable. If the patient is going to get IV alteplase, then the goal systolic blood pressure should be between 140 and 180. If a patient has an ischemic stroke, it's best to keep the head of the bed flat to improve the blood flow to the brain. Check the glycemia. Get two peripheral IVs, inquire about anticoagulant medication use, review the renal function tests, identify if the patient has had any recent surgery or if any bleed or trauma within the last three months. Prepare to go to the CT scanner to get the non-contrasted head CT scan and stay in the CT suite until the neurologist decides if the patient will need a CTA or a CTP. Have the stroke kit available. The moment to administer IV alteplase is between the CT scan and the CTA or CTP. The administration of IV alteplase most likely will be done in the CT suite. Please, get the patient's weight as you transfer the patient from the stretcher to the CT table. The most common stroke mimics are delirium or functional. If the patient is already admitted to the hospital and develops stroke-like symptoms, then use the FAST scale to screen the patient. If the FAST scale is positive, then immediately notify the rapid response team who, with the neurologist on call, will run the available and improved stroke protocol. Get all the vital signs, the goal systolic blood pressure between 120 and 200, check the glycemia, lay the patient flat to improve the blood flow to the brain, assure that there are two peripheral IVS working. You'd be ready to provide some critical information, such as when was the patient lackish, if the patient is receiving any anticoagulants, if any recent surgeries, bleeding or trauma, the most recent renal function and body weight, code status, and what was the functional status of the patient prior to the current admission. Prepare to go to the CT scanner. No lackish, which is not the same as when the patient was found with the deficit. If under 24 hours from lackish, the patient would be a candidate for acute attempt at recanalization. With IV alteplase in under 40 minutes and with endovascular therapy within the first 24 hours. Similarly, to the ED, if the patient is on anticoagulant and the patient has an intracranial bleed of the CT scan, then the anticoagulant effect should be reversed using the available order sets in Meditic. The patient should be made full NPO and later the bedside nurse can perform the swallowing safety screening before deciding if the SLP will need to evaluate the patient. The most common stroke mimics are delirium or functional. Other core measures and key stroke elements of care include time to endovascular reperfusion, time of in the vascular reperfusion, documentation of the final arterial blood flow grade at the end of the endovascular procedure, the rate of hemorrhagic transformation, and what is the modified ranking score at 90 days. We know checklists help increase patient safety. A stroke patient checklist has been developed and is available for use of the bedside to guide, to remind, and to assure that the appropriate steps are being done for all stroke patients. On the checklist you will find that there are certain steps to be done on admissions such as the documentation of the NIH stroke score, applying SEDs for VTE prophylaxis, keeping the patient full NPO until the swallowing the screen has been done and documented, and if aspirin has been ordered either PO or rectally. Every four hours, perform and document vital signs, get the Glasgow Coma score, and perform a focused neurologic assessment. Every shift performs and document verbal and printed stroke education and checks the patient has at hand the stroke book every day and at discharge. At discharge, document the NIH stroke score, complete and document the modified ranking score, confirm that the patient has a stroke book and that the signed attestation of the stroke book received is in the chart. Confirm and answer yes to stroke certification documentation in the discharge instructions once it's all completed. Let's make the best care the standard of care. Let's cover all the bases. The best stroke care for each patient. We are in this together. Your diligent, deliberate and thoughtful care makes all the difference. More pertinent information in the description. Thank you.